Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This video has been highly requested ever since my first color scheme video a few years ago. I got a lot of feedback, questions, and comments that I've now put together to create this new in-depth tutorial all about creating digital color scheme concepts for mini painting. One of the questions I'm often asked is, why even take the time to make a color scheme? Why not just go straight to painting? And the answer is, why not both? Sometimes I just go into painting without any real plan and everything works great. And other times I want a plan. And when I want a plan, making up a color scheme is a quick and fun way to do it. There's actually lots of reasons that someone might want to brainstorm a color scheme for their minis. You might be painting a huge army and want to try out different color scheme ideas before applying it to like a hundred different models. You might simply want to play with a few different color schemes without the added potential of having to strip your miniatures each time. You might want to get a better understanding of the finer details of your miniature on a computer screen before you dive into painting the model yourself. Or you simply have trouble fussing over colors at the hobby table and you want to try a different format for once. Whatever your reasons for wanting to try it out, planning color schemes digitally is pretty fun and easy once you get the hang of it. And the techniques I'll show you today can be used by anyone with a computer, a keyboard, and a mouse. Today my subject will be this lone chaos warrior who's been sitting in my pile of potential for probably about two decades. I thought this was a great opportunity to take this poor little mini that's been collecting dust in my pile and turn them into something fun. So let's get into it. So to make a color scheme for your minis, you'll first need some form of art software, and I'm not talking about MS Paint or PowerPoint. There's a bunch of fantastic free art software options out there, and I actually go through a few in another video that I'll link in the description below. Today I'll be using Fire Alpaca, which I recommend to follow along with the tutorial, and is also linked in the description below. I'm not affiliated with them, I just find it one of the easiest programs to use for complete beginners compared to most others. All of the instructions I give will be applicable to Fire Alpaca, but many of the settings I talk about are found in similar places across all the other free software. If you're a digital artist, any paid software like Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, or Procreate are going to work fantastic as well. And if you're lucky enough to have a drawing tablet with a pen, then you have an advantage because you can get even finer details out of this process. Typically, I use a tablet and Clip Studio Paint or Procreate to develop my miniature color schemes because I am a digital artist. But today, I'm just going to be using my mouse and my keyboard because that's all you need to create a simple color scheme. All of the tools I'll be discussing are included in pretty much every art program. The icons and location might be a little different, but keep Google close at hand to help you out if you get lost and you should have no problem accessing all the same tools that I use here. Once you have your art software of choice downloaded and installed, you're going to need an image of your miniature unpainted. Check out the manufacturer's website or do some Google image searches of the model in question, take a photo off the box, or if like me, your search brings up not much and you can't find really good unpainted mini photos, you could take some of your own. Try to take the photos on a neutral background that differs in shade for the mini itself so that the mini stands out. If you can't find or create photos of the unpainted minis, a nice clear photo of painted minis will suffice, although you'll have to deal with some dark and light values present in the photo that will probably influence your color scheme. Some folks like to use the front and back views of a mini, but I typically only do up a front view unless there's some sort of prominent detail on the back, like for example when I concepted this Swamp Kala Shaman for my Halloween video. At this point I also need to mention, obviously, if you're borrowing artwork or model photos online that don't belong to you, you should only be using them for personal color scheme purposes. Don't share them publicly without expressly crediting the artists who created the model. The next thing to do is set up the photo in the art program so that you're ready to color. I'm going to pull the photo of my miniature into my art program. And from here, the steps you take kind of depend on the image you're using as well as your personal preference. 
But first of all, if your image has any color in it whatsoever, you're going to want to lower the saturation or convert the image to grayscale and then back to RGB color. You're going to want to get familiar with your layers in your chosen art program. Layers are pretty simple. Whichever layer you have selected, everything you draw will stay on that specific layer. So if you draw on it, then hide that layer, boom, it's hidden. This can be really useful for color schemes because you can put one palette on each layer, and I'll go into that shortly. First of all, I like to play around with image adjustment tools, such as brightness, contrast, and levels, to get a nice piece of artwork to color on. The ones I use depend on the image, but my goal is to get a nice, bright, high contrast, low saturation image without washing out any of the details of the mini so that I can see what I'm coloring. Once I'm happy with the adjustments, I'll merge the adjustment layers with the base image if needed and have a nice flat miniature photo again. Next, you'll want to set up all your layers. Create layers and click and drag them to order them correctly. You should have a layer at the very top called palettes. Your mini image should be below that. Below that, you should have one to three clear layers and below that at the very bottom, a blank white background layer. You can label your layers with different names by double clicking the layers themselves. And later on, we'll use multiple color layers to test different schemes. But for now, your image is all set up. Save your file in whatever the native file type is for your software, and if you're not sure which to use, the PSD extension usually does the trick. It's Photoshop native, so it saves layers and all sorts of other fancy stuff. Remember to save often while you work, just in case anything happens. But for now, your file is all set up to begin coloring, so let's get into color next. So it's time to take a second to collect a few images to use as color reference for your miniature color schemes. Now is the time to ask yourself, what colors do you want to try out on this mini? Your brainstorming might include, are you going for bright colors or monotone, high or low contrast, earth tones, warm or cool colors, a wild alien combination of colors? Do you want to focus on one main color or have several colors be the focus? There's a whole bunch of different ways to approach color palettes, and that's probably a topic for another video. But for a few ideas, you can use Google to check out concept art of the minis you're painting or existing paint jobs that others have done, or even paint jobs of entirely different minis that inspire you. Another good technique, and the one I'm going to be using today, is to search for color palettes online using websites like Cooler, Colors.io, or others, and save the ones that appeal to you for your minis. I'll link a couple that I like to use in the description below. Again, I'm not affiliated, I just like looking up color palettes, it's fun. You may also want to consider the paints you have on hand, and if you might have to buy new ones or consider mixing your paints. Typically, for concepts, I like to have two or three different palette ideas in mind before I get started. I knew I wanted bright, unusual colors for this mini, just for fun, and, uh, well, clearly I had pinks and purples on the brain. Anyway, to load the palettes into your art software, go back to your image and make sure the palettes layer is selected. Then open each palette in a new window and use the software's eyedropper tool to pick up each color. Then I take the paintbrush tool and drop a circle of each of the colors onto the appropriate layer on my mini image, the palettes layer. With the colors painted right on top of your image, you can then use the eyedropper tool to just pick up each color to paint with when you need it. It's really convenient. Alternately, if you're using some sort of like pre-painted scheme for minis, you're going to want to pick the colors in the color picker on your art software and same deal, you can apply the color to the screen with the paintbrush on the palette layer so that you have it available to grab from. All right, it's color time. So those clear layers you made before, you're gonna want one for each palette you wanna try out. You can rename them all to more easily keep track as well. Next, select the layer with your mini image on it and locate your blending options menu. Usually it's right above the layers themselves in the layers panel. Pop it down and select multiply. Now, as you can see, you can select any of your new palette layers and color on them 
and the color will show up underneath the mini, so you can see exactly what the colors will look like on the mini itself. Now, when it comes to properly applying color to the image, there's a few ways to go about it. You can just start grabbing your colors and get right into painting right now. But something I like to do is get a flat layer of color down first to create a transparency. I'll show you what I mean. Start using your mouse to paint with one of the brush tools until the entire area of the mini is filled in. You can also use something like the selection lasso tool to just select the area that you want to add color to and fill it in that way. But I find the paint method is just a little more organic and a little more fun. It's my preferred way of doing it for sure. As far as what kind of paintbrush to use, I would suggest selecting one that has a hard round edge. And as for size, change it as you see fit. I usually switch through sizing throughout the process whenever I want finer or thicker lines. Once you've filled in the entire area with color, lock the transparency on the layer that you're working on. Usually that's done either via a small checkerboard button or a checkbox called alpha lock, or in this case, protect alpha. And once you lock transparency on your color layer, you can color to your heart's content without going outside of the area that you've already painted. Now you can select this canvas and copy and paste it to your other layers and be sure to lock the transparency on the other layers too. And that way, all of your layers are set up for coloring and you're ready to go. If you want to try out multiple color schemes, create a new layer for each one and shift between them to help make your final decision. You can also use layers in some other fun ways, like using a separate layer to add finer details to your color schemes after the fact. That way, if you don't like something, you can erase it without affecting the lower layers. Anyway, now you can finally dig into adding your color choices to your mini. Make sure to be careful to only work on a single layer per color palette. Most software allows you to lock layers that you aren't working on, which I recommend to avoid mistakenly painting on the wrong one. While you're working, here's a few quick pro tips. In most art software, you can hit Ctrl Z to undo an action or Ctrl Y to redo an action. Ctrl Z is like, I, I think I hit Ctrl Z more than any other key on my entire keyboard when I do digital art. It is extremely useful to have on hand. Likewise, most tools have shortcuts. For example, in Fire Alpaca, you can hit B to turn on your brush tool and I to turn on your eyedropper tool in case you want to switch between picking up your colors and painting with your colors. Learn your shortcuts as much as you can and use them to make this process even faster. Also, erasers are your friend, so find the eraser tool and don't be afraid to use it. My last tip is that a lot of these newer free art softwares have some sort of pressure smoothing or stabilizer option for the brushes, which helps the brush move a little more slowly and stabilize the line, which can help with the jagged uneven edges you sometimes get when you draw with a mouse. Other than that, just take your time and have fun with this coloring process. Like any new software, I'm sure that this is a bit overwhelming for some of you and there's a bit of a learning curve, but just take your time, play around with different tools, and find out what works best for you. Something I've suggested might not be a good method for you. Maybe you'll find a way to do things that work better. If you get stuck or think you might have done something wrong, refer to your software's help section or use Google. There's a wealth of information out there to help you out. Once you get the hang of whatever software you're using, creating color schemes for your minis can be really fast and a great rewarding way to visualize your design before sitting at the hobby table. But for this first go, take your time, take the opportunity to move slowly and to learn. Soon you'll have your basic palettes all laid down. And now if you feel like it, you can keep going with adding some finer detail to the color scheme. You can add some more details to the face or the embellishments or even some shading and highlight values on separate layers if you're so inclined. I will often put in a bit more detail simply because I like drawing and it's fun for me, but I didn't do so this time. It's absolutely unnecessary if you'd rather just save your work and get to painting. Your only goal here is to get to a point where you feel you'd be happy referencing it for painting. Once you're happy, you're ready to save and export. So make sure to save your file in its original format one more time. 
Then you can save as or export and export to a web-friendly file like JPEG or PNG. Which one you choose doesn't matter too much. Both will provide excellent detail for drawing reference. And if you're exporting an image for each of your color palettes, be sure to give them unique names so that you know which is which. Now your concept is ready for you to reference. Stick it in a cloud drive to pull it up on your laptop, tablet, or cell phone while you're at the hobby table and you're at the races. If you're curious which color scheme I chose, here's a quick speed paint of my Chaos Warrior for you to enjoy. And that's the gist for creating color schemes for your miniatures using digital art programs. This is a relatively concise tutorial, and I know it might seem like a lot to take in, but like I said, take your time, use Google, and just practice. Once you do this a couple of times, I think you'll find it's a great way to knock out a few cool color schemes and get an idea of what your models will look like in color before you ever sit down to paint. These days I can get a color scheme done up really quickly and when I take it to my hobby table I feel much more confident getting started with that guideline in place. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always I welcome suggestions and ideas for my next mini painting videos and thank you so much for watching today. I will see you in the next video. Bye!